So one of the big news across the past week or so is the hike in palm oil prices. Uh, it almost touched 5,000 uh, per tonne when it comes to the uh, futures, right? CPO futures. Uh, but we like to start with this uh, interesting news. Couple steals oil palm fruit, but car catches fire. Why, why is this even relevant? Oh, too busy to find stock ideas? Check out Fiber Pro to shortcut your research time and effort by 90%. 10% off link in the comments and description. Oh, uh, if you guys didn't know, uh, when something is so valuable, right, that you need to steal that particular item, I think that is the point of time where you know that palm oil is the new goal. In a sense, Yeah, yes. in a sense. Uh, and it, they got so greedy that they tried to like take a lot of it. But in the end, their car cannot fit and then it <laughs> catches on fire. I think once they like try to like hit the road or something. There's, so, there'll be some heat and it's flammable, right? So yeah. that, that's probably yeah, why. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably it's because also the... the they I, I assume they take in a lot of palm oil kernels into their car. That's why it's so overloaded, right? That, yeah, it cannot drive. La. But this news actually came uh, like on the 10th of October. Right now, it's like the 4th of November. So funny thing is now palm oil price actually went up I think 10% after yep. these news. So yeah, it's a quite interesting thing to see that, you know, the couple know something that we don't know <laughs> that they are even, uh, they have to go through the extent to steal palm oils. Yeah. So you can see the, the chart is, uh, of course, yeah, it's not hit the, the high of 2022. Yeah. But uh, it's creeping up. Yes, it's exactly. creeping up. Yeah. So I think, yeah, just now you mentioned that it hit to almost hit to a 5,000 ringgit per ton. And this actually have to do with some sort of a structural problem rather than just a temporary. Well, there's some uh, influence of uh, temporary measures that actually boost up the palm oil price. But we shall take a look at what are the, what actually is happening and is causing the palm oil prices to go up. So number one, it is the EU's RSPO. Okay, yes. what is an RSPO? So if you don't know, RSPO is the Round Table Sustainable Palm Oil Measure that is done by the European Union. Uh, basically, they don't want us planters, the Indonesians and also the Malaysian to actually deforest because they see it as uh, you, you're hurting the biodiversity, you're hurting the environment, you're killing orangutans, all those kind of things. So they did this measure since 2008 and... They also did uh, mention that they can only import palm oil that is not being deforested. Okay. They only import palm oil that is reforested. Uh, so yeah, basically they are just trying to say that you cannot expand your land bank already. Your land bank must be kept within that whatever that is available right now. And if you want us to buy your palm oil, you must replant at that land bank. Yeah. Uh, so that is the E measure of the ESG. Does this uh, actually affect the yield if you're replanting on the same land? It does, right? Uh, it does. Uh, number one, it, uh, it the time it. Uh, time also is one thing. Longer. Uh, yeah, the time will be longer also. Uh, it's not efficient because you have to wait for your trees to like grow old and grow long and then you have to take time to cut, 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 cut and then replant, clear the land, replant again. Right, yeah, so it takes time. Uh, another one, it is... Um, I can imagine the nutrients in the soil is not as good anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can it. say that they have to use more pesticides, fertilizer, the right fertilizer, the right pesticides, and everything. Yeah, that's why you see, uh, especially the Southeast Asians uh, planters, right? Their yield is actually dropping, instead of increasing, as compared to like the US or even the UK. Uh, probably also is because there's no incentive to actually uh, innovate in this particular sector. Uh, just because of a lot of these like um very strict measures and restrictions done by the EU. So the planters also will feel like, you know, uh, you do all of these measures in the end, why, why would I need to spend so much money on this That's particular right. thing just to, for you to actually not import uh, the items from us? So that's why uh, there's a lot of nuances that actually demotivates the planters uh, uh, at the moment. It and sounds like it's, it's almost like a ban, but only not in name, yeah. right? by, by, by having this very strict uh, RSPO rules. Yes, correct, correct, correct. So yeah, uh, this is number one. So your supply is essentially kept uh, and your production cannot really increase as, as fast as possible or as it was uh, as compared to 10 years ago. So uh, you can see that uh, these are the few countries that are the major importers for palm oil worldwide in 2023. Uh, you can see the, number, the top two one is India and China. And top three is actually, top three or top two is actually EU. So uh, this is actually coming from the Malaysian Palm Oil, uh, I think, Association. Uh, they recorded that 
the e European Union actually imports, like they are the third largest in uh, palm oil importers for our country. Uh, but if you calculate over here, right, so uh, the, the EU includes the Netherlands, Italy, Spain, Germany, and also other countries like Belgium, uh, Uzbekistan, Denmark, and on, on so forth. Uh, but you can see that if you add all of these numbers, right, it's almost close to, uh, it's actually, uh, it surpassed Pakistan already. But uh, it could, the, the, the number of uh, import value is actually close to China or maybe slightly lesser than that. So they're actually the top three EU guys. They are quite a big player in terms of buying palm oil. And that's why they can do those measures at the RSPO because uh, they have the power to do it. If, uh, you know, if you don't abide by their rule, means they are not going to buy your palm oil. So it's simple as that. So yeah, you can see that uh, this is a statistic that is done by the US Department of Agriculture. Uh, basically, it says that in 2025, uh, and uh, yeah, actually just in 2025, the consumption for palm oil is going to be exceeding uh, 2024. Right now, we are actually seeing some sort of like uh, consumption exceeding actually in 2024. And I think the, the, the sorry, consumption increasing. Yeah, consumption, uh, so, yeah, yeah, correct. So I think one thing we need to highlight here also is that you can't plant a palm oil overnight. Ah, uh, yes. You need exactly. at least four years? Uh, uh, seven years. Seven, seven to eight right? years. Sorry. Yeah. Seven to start harvesting. Yeah. So, uh, we would see this trend, right? Going down quite a bit. Yes, exactly. So, but in terms of the ending stock. Yeah, exactly. Your ending stock will go down. Your production is slightly stagnant or maybe they can increase a little bit if can, they can actually uh, come up with a much more efficient operation. Um, but consumption has always been increasing. Uh, so, and I right find now, it weird that we have to get the stats from the US. <laughs> yeah. Other than Malaysia. Yeah, but. technically it's from the US and also from the Thailand research, uh, which is Kuang Sri research. Okay. So yeah, it's pretty useful information. But anyway, it's basically just trying to tell you that demand will always be uh, outstripping supply uh, right now and also probably in the future. Now, a second reason it has to do with Indonesia B40. So if you don't know what's B40, it's basically uh, biodiesel. Not to be confused with uh, Malaysia's, yeah, yeah, Malaysia's B40, B40. The, the income uh, category. Yeah, so this B40 have to do with their biodiesel. So basically your diesel component needs to be 40% needs to come from, uh, no, come from palm oil. La. So you can see that this is the initiative that the Indonesia have been doing for quite a number of years already. And they have been aggressive, uh, aggressively increasing the B for uh, the number. So it was B5 and then B10, B15, B20, then all the way up to B40 in 2025. And I think the Indonesia government also did mention that they are they want to grow that into B50 sometime in the future as well. So what this means is that they need more consumption internally inside their country, uh, which means lesser uh, export volume uh, uh, from Indonesia. And Indonesia it is the largest in terms yeah, of like 60%, exporters. Yeah, 60 plus percent. Yeah. 60 plus percent, yeah. yeah. So what this means also is actually Malaysia can benefit uh, more from export uh, because of all of these uh, measures. Yeah, so you can see that the export from Indonesia actually start to flat decline. Lining, yeah. yeah, flat lining. But this also has to do with COVID-19. But we can see that... Even uh, then, yeah. Even then... It hasn't it recovered yet. Yeah, it wouldn't go back... Probably won't go back to a 2018, 2019 level. Or maybe it will touch, but then it will just be at right. that figure. Lah. Now, a third reason. This one is new. Um, it's Thailand export ban. This is very unexpected. Yeah, a lot of people <coughs> don't know that Thailand is about 5%, right? Of yeah, yeah, 5% supply. of global we supply. We tend to think it's just Indonesia, Malaysia, which understandable, but... Thailand's part of it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this news actually shocked the, the market and why it makes sense the palm oil price actually rally up so much is because uh, yeah, Thailand is actually just going to curb their export because they are facing some sort of like a drought. So that actually affected their production uh, in their country and also uh, some sort of like pests uh, that is happening like that actually destroyed their crops. So they need to export ban at the moment for temporary I think until December 2024 so you can see whether January 2025 whether the palm oil price will start to ease or probably right now so probably uh, palm oil price will start to ease because it has been going up uh, since forever right so uh, yeah this one is a very very interesting thing yeah so and just now MG mentioned uh, Thailand is the third not largest which is 5% and the top two one is Indonesia and Malaysia too busy to find stock ideas check out Fiverr Pro to shortcut your research time and effort by 90% 10% off link in the comments and description. Yeah, so uh, remember that in 2022, uh, the CPO price actually went up to its high, right? right around 7,000 yeah. to 8,000 metric ton. Yeah, so um, that is actually why, why palm oil is actually having a mini rally, which is to uh, which is from 3,700 to 5,000. Uh, it wouldn't go back to 8,000 unless Indonesia start to do 
export ban again. Uh, but hopefully they won't uh, because if not, the our palm oil uh, consumers actually will be the one that is uh, suffer will be the one who is going to be suffering because of the higher uh, palm oil prices. Yeah, uh, this one is the war and export ban, which is resulting the CPO price to rally up uh, at its all time high. Now the last one, this one, uh, it's probably uh, it's it's there's no justification there's no behind details it. Yet also yeah, exactly. But it could potentially be another reason, uh, which is BRICS. So what if actually BRICS replace EU as the third largest importer? So that could be also the case, assuming that everybody starts to buy palm oil within our own gang. Yeah, but, but, but the thing for me is it's already there, right? Like India and China is already yeah. there. So I, Yeah, yeah. So but this is just like a mini, mini speculation uh, by yeah. some of the people. Uh. So uh whether they can replace EU or not, uh, that's also another question. But uh we believe that probably it wouldn't really change much also uh, because EU is still needs to buy uh they still need to buy vegetable oil. Uh it's an alternative for them other than soybean and sunflower oil. So uh yeah, whether they can replace or not, this is still like a question mark. Okay, so back to local, which is uh the yeah. interesting part. So foreign fund flow, uh, the foreigners have been actually been buying our plantation company for the past few weeks. So you can see that they have been buying United Plantation and also Johor Plantation just last week only. And yeah, and the one that is selling right now is still our local institution, uh, which is quite funny. <laughs> yeah, so you can see that um, the reason, uh, after they they have been buying our plantation stock, right? Uh, you can see that some <coughs> of the names actually yep. have rallied a lot. Jai Tiasa, Johor Plantation, United Plant, and also SOP, Sarawak Oil Palm. All of these share price actually uh, increase quite a bit, like 5 to 10%. If I, if, just uh, curious, if I give you a one to two sentence description on the differences on these four companies, what will you say? Just one uh, to two sentences, keep it short. Okay, so the Jai Tiasa, SOP, and also uh, and also. JPG, uh, these three are actually mainly uh, upstream player. Actually, all of them are upstream, but our United Plantation also got downstream. Johor Plantation also is moving towards downstream. So if you are an upstream player, you can actually capture the most benefit from yeah. the CPO's rally because uh, that is basically what they are selling uh, based on the palm oil prices. Um, yeah, so that's number one, uh, whether they are upstream or downstream. Uh, number two is that the age profile of their car of their trees. So Jai Tiasa one has the, I would say 90%, 97% of their planted area are prime mature, which means uh, their trees are the one that can produce the most volume, uh, uh, based, just based on that age profile itself. Uh, for SOP, JPG, and also United Plantation, I think their, their age profile also is okay. But then the, if you compare between the percentage of planted area, it's not as high as uh, Jai Tiasa's. Got it. So yeah, that's, right. the, that's the that's the. If you actually if you want to learn more about all these guys, just head over to our Viral Pro uh, program. Uh, yes. All the details yeah. inside. Yeah, and the last one we can see here is the the latest yeah. update from local institutions on plantation. They are all still neutral. Nobody is actually putting an overweight uh, opinion at the moment. Probably they're going to be doing soon because if you look at the share price rally, right? Um, I I would say that yeah, there's a high possibility. Usually, that they're usually is when the share price rally, then only the institutions want to, to keep yeah, a yeah, yeah, buy call, but anyways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so there's a few questions that you may be asking whether this rally is sustainable. Um, I think it 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 will like maintain at a certain price. It will definitely correct, but then I don't think it will drop all the way down to yeah. like... Yeah, I think uh, in the five, five to ten year period, you it's probably comfortable to say that it will be higher than where it is today. Yeah. But then in the middle, there's going to be a lot of waves. So, uh, uh, yes, you know, very exactly. choppy. Yeah. So this one also have to do with uh, what does the EU think la, on uh, whether they will take back whatever they say. Like, you know what? It's okay. You can just expand the land bank, the forest. But then I believe that won't be the case, right? Because of ESG concern. Uh, so yeah, that's already a cap in terms of your land bank expansion. Uh, number two is the demand for palm oil. La. If let's say the, uh, I mean, I, I read some of the article, they say that some people say palm oil is not as healthy. Uh, some people say it is healthier than soybean and some, some oh, it is, oil. It is. Uh, I think I sent this chart in, in our Fire Pro group. Palm oil only loses out to animal fat. So, I mean, palm oil and lard. Okay, so I think the worst is like rapeseed. Rapeseed, yeah. Corn oil, whatever. Yeah. 
And then soybean oil has like 30% in linoleic acid, which is linked to inflammation. And then at about 10% is lard and uh, palm oil. Only things like, uh, what's the word? Uh, like beef tallow, ghee, a lower 2-3% linoleic mm. acid. Whereas palm oil is, I would say it's it's above average. It's not the best oil. Mm. So yeah. So uh, yeah. So health aside, then also you need to see whether the demand and the usage for palm oil. Uh, if the demand, you will now go. The thing is, the, the thing is, the demand will will always, always be there. Great. It's so widely used. Uh, yeah, it's cheap. Mm. Yep, it's cheap and it's more efficient. So I, if nothing changes and let's say there is, uh, if there's no export ban by Thailand or Indonesia, I think the price will normalize. But if let's say things like export ban continues, right, the, obviously palm oil prices will rally. Lah. So uh, yeah, so for the time being short, I would say for the few months, probably there will be some correction. After correction, then probably you're just going to maintain at a certain price. It will be a new high. Lah. Uh, that's my own opinion. So the second one is the worst case scenario, right? Uh, the worst case scenario is actually um, whatever we say in our first our first point, which is sustainable. Uh, whether EH, uh, EU decided to reverse what they say and also the demand for palm oil start to drop or probably there's like a new alternative pop out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, that, that would be the worst case scenario. Now, the last one is stocks to buy. So this one, um, we actually mentioned a few names already uh, in the previous slide. Uh, some of the names are actually uh, inside FirePro and also our boring portfolio. And yeah, so if you want to know what companies that we buy, you can check it out in FirePro. But yep. our take is, or our, our suggestion is, uh, is basically look for companies that is on an inflection point. They are in a turning point already. Meaning to say that they have been paying down their debt a lot. And right now it's turning net cash. And also they are going to be doubling their um, dividend payout. So these two are the key measures. And uh, if I were to add a third one, which is um, probably how are they going to use their free cash flow? If they are going to be using it to expand more Lang Bank, uh, I think it would be not so good lah because you have to wait for another Take seven time. to eight years. Yeah. yeah, it would take seven to eight years. So the key thing is always looking for dividend payout double uh, or more than that. And also uh, net debt turn to net cash. So yeah, those are the few companies that you want to look out for. All right, guys, October, the update just launched. Uh, you know, the returns went up a little bit. Uh, the borrowing portfolio is still doing pretty well. Of course, we have the FPG, launch of FPG, which is the global portfolio for FirePro. What is FirePro? Well, it's designed for busy people to reduce their research time by 90 over percent when it comes to finding interesting uh, investment ideas. Uh, these reports are very easy to read. It takes you no more than 15 minutes. If you're a slow reader, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, you get you can, you know, take a pause and see all the features and benefits. And uh, we recently increased our price, but you still get a 10% off if you are a viewer of uh, FIRO. So links is in the comments and description. If you want to get a taste, just check out our free sample so you know what you're working with and you know you can tell whether it's worth your money or not and with that guys i'll see you in the next video bye bye